and welcome to your LSU football fix. I'm Preston Guy, staff writer of TigerBait.com. Tonight's show is presented by Tremonti's Meat and Seafood. Y'all check it out. They still do have their Heaven's Door single barrel staff select uh, uh, bourbon whiskey available in their store off the corner of uh, Old Jefferson and Airline Highway right behind Parkview Baptist. So go check it out. You can only get from this particular barrel of whiskey, which is very smooth, by the way. We, we cheers to it when uh, LSU hired Brian Kelly. Very smooth, very good quality bourbon whiskey only available at Tremonti's go pop in check them out tonight we're bringing on a very exciting guest uh active NFL player Braden Fahoko you might remember him from LSU uh national champion defensive tackle um and usually with guests I bring on this show I kind of have to pick one or the other either someone who's really good at articulating and knowledgeable about the situation or someone who's notable well, Brayden is really excited to pursue a career in media once he's done with football and he's trying to get his name out there and do stuff. So I get a little bit of best of both worlds tonight. I'm interested to talk about his perspective as a successful transfer into LSU, because as we all know, LSU is going to have tons of transfers. After that, we're going to go break down what I'm looking forward to for LSU's National Signing Day coming down the road. Of course, National Signing Day is next Wednesday. Uh, and of course, uh, the semester you, you have to be enrolled by Thursday to, uh, you know, be a transfer in the transfer portal. So a lot of things are going to be hitting us pretty quickly here, uh, with eight spots remaining. We'll see where Brian Kelly and LSU goes. We're going to hear from Tremonti's and then we're going to pop right back and bring Braden in to talk about, uh, all things LSU and crazy stuff going on in the NFL. So. With no further ado, here is Tremonti's. Tremonti's has meat. Tremonti's has seafood. Tremonti's has much more. Tailgating and home gating platters. Huge wine and liquor selection. Beer and all the spices you need. Chairman Reserve and Wagyu meats. Ribeye rolls, shrimp rolls, kebabs. 20 flavors of sausage for the grill. Daily lunch specials and game processing. On-site catering also available. Good meat ain't cheap and cheap meat ain't good. Visit Tremontes.com. Good meat ain't cheap, cheap meat ain't good. Y'all go check them out. Uh, that's Tremontes Meat and Seafood. All right, without further ado, here is our very special guest. The one, the only, Braden Fihoko. What's going on, Braden? How's LA treating you? It's, it's going good. Um, back in Texas right now for the off season in my house oh, here. Yeah. Uh, but nevertheless, doing doing really well. How you doing? I'm doing good, man. I'm, I'm much better now that I got you in here. So you ever seen uh, that many wild games in one weekend that we saw this weekend in the NFL? Every game determined on the last play. Uh, Walk off games, <clears throat> especially the um, the Buffalo game. It just defies laws of nature. 13 mm -hmm. seconds left. I mean, you're thinking, oh, it's over. You know, the Bills are going to the AFC Championship. I mean, San Francisco is, is stall made on offense, you know, against Green Bay and Lambeau. You're thinking they're not going to the NFC Championship. Tom Brady's down 28-3 to and, and ties it up, or 27-3, whatever it is, comes back. And, uh, man, just the appreciation for the level of football that was played this weekend, I only hope that, you know, the championship games this next weekend can live up to that, but I don't think we're going to get, you know, anything close to that. And and that's just great football to watch. I mean, it'd be impossible to top. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. It was just such a fun weekend of football. Wow. Uh, <laughs> um, so uh, your old teammates, Jamar Chase, Joe Burrow mm -hmm. are putting on quite a season, impressing a lot of people. Uh, they're one game away from the Super Bowl. Uh, mm -hmm. Are you, I mean, does that surprise you at all? Does it impress you? Like, what what are your thoughts on Joe being just having such an incredible season? Um, you know, Joe's a <laughs> he he's such a great competitor. Um, I mean, uh, for a guy that you know, both transferred to LSU and and both kind of had like the same journey along the lines of having to prove yourself at a different college and you know having to take a, a team that where we were in 2017 and winning a championship and now to see what he's doing in the NFL with Jamar mm -hmm. and, and Tyler and Thaddeus on that team, it's no surprise to me because you know the work that's put in and you just know the the mentality and, and just the – how should I say it? The, uh, the level of competition we come from. You know, we're not 
we're not shy about you know competing at high levels, especially coming from LSU off of our mm-hmm. championship year in 2019. And so when I see them executing at high level, you know, I'm proud. I texted Joe, you know, on uh, on Sunday night. Um, and I was like, man, go get it, man. Super proud of you and 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 go win the damn thing. Excuse my language. Um, but <laughs> really super proud, super pumped to watch those guys play, especially Tyler, um, to see how far he's come as a player. So there's a lot of guys. I mean, on every team, I, I kind of know everybody. I mean, Clyde for the Chiefs and Daryl and, you know, Arden with the 49ers and, and, and just seeing all those guys getting a chance to play on a big stage now, you know, uh, it's really uh, humbling and, and really proud of those guys. I look, Carl Dunn gave you a little shout out here. I'm going to put him up there. Chargers are an up and coming team. You got a good thing going on in LA out there. And, mm. you know, you've gotten some play. You know, you you actually were on active roster, got some tackles this year. So doing good things out there in LA. So I'm sure that's exciting for for y'all as well. Mm. Yeah, we, I, I, you know, I'm selfishly saying this, but I, I'm saying that I think we have the best quarterback in the league. And uh, oh, it, over I, your I, college I, teammate. I, I, wow. I'm selfishly, because, you know, my, my heart is with the Chargers right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I mean, each guy that I've played with, they know how much I've, I, I like Joe is probably one of the best quarterbacks I've, I've played with all time. Mm-hmm. In college. And, you know, I played with Pat in uh, my, my first two years at Texas tech and, and, you know, all three of those guys just getting to play with each of them. Um, you know, who goes to say I'll be with the Bengals in three years and I'll be saying Joe's the best quarterback in the league or, or mm-hmm. the four five, six years, but super pumped that I got to really play with three great quarterbacks and uh, you know, I mean, to to watch them duke it out next week, and and for an upcoming guy like Justin himself, that you know we were short of the playoffs, but I think he's hungry to be back there next year. Um, the NFL's in good hands. <laughs> oh, definitely. And I was just thinking to myself, like, just like the upcoming, like and, and at the quarterback position, the yeah. upcoming stars in the NFL. I mean. You know, it seems like we had that, you know, Peyton, Brady, Rogers, just dynasty going on for a while. There's a lot of Josh Allen's in that conversation. Mm-hmm. A lot of great, young, talented players. Of course, Mahomes is already, you know, he's he's a, absolutely there, already yeah. won a Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and I talked to you about this a little bit before the show. Um, mm-hmm. uh, Daniel Glenn wants to know, any thoughts on Sean Payton retiring? You know how seriously down here in Louisiana yeah. we take our Saints. It's – uh. Wow. You know, I was a kid when the Saints won the Super Bowl. And um, I remember watching, especially after Katrina, how that kind of just struck the nation emotionally um, to see a great coach walk away from the game. And I kind of watched a little bit of, about his presser where he says he doesn't know what he's about to do next, but it kind of feels good. Um, to me, that that kind of just means that he left it all out there. And it's very sad, you know, to see guys like that walk away from the game. Um, you know, when Drew retired, that was another one. And then, uh, you know, Tom Brady's kind of going through the same, you, you know, thing this year with doesn't know if he's going to retire or not. You know, you just appreciate greats like that, you know, because mm-hmm. great people, great coaches, great players don't come around that often. And and what they do for the game, it uh, it passes down for generations and it just makes it that much more entertaining and that much more achievable to achieve higher ceilings for us, you know, as the young upcoming generation of players and coaches you know, moving along in the future. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, one of the names that's coming up a lot for this uh, Saints coaching church is a New Orleans native, Eric Bieniemy for the Chiefs. Yeah. And, you know, I kind of joke around about the Chiefs a lot. It's like the rules of football don't apply to a lot of those guys just because they're just physically inhuman. Mm-hmm. I mean, Tyreek Hill, Mahomes, a yeah. uh, little, little, little Clydro action, action yeah. in there too. He's a little inhuman in his own right. Um, <laughs> you know, do you think that system they, they do in Kansas City, can that apply to teams who don't have those freaks of nature? You know, it's funny that you asked that. I got a, I got a question on my Instagram the other day. Um, some or my Twitter and somebody had asked, "Who's the better quarterback out of Mahomes, Burrow, and Herbert? You played with all three of them." And I said, "All three are really great quarterbacks, and what makes them all great is the system that allows them to be themselves. Right? You can't take a Justin and put him in a Chief system. You can't take a Pat and put him in a <clears throat> in a Cincinnati system, and you can't take Joe and put him in a Charger system." because every guy works differently in the way they command their offense. And all three are great quarterbacks that do so. So with the chiefs offense, you see Tyree kill, Travis Kelsey, Clyde Edwards, Elaire. What they do is built off of those guys, you know? And if you take a guy like 
the enemy and 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 move him to New Orleans, you have to create a system that acclimates to your Michael Thomas, Alvin Kamara. You know, they go get a, a second, third elite receiver or, or however long the lines they want to move with, with Jameis coming back. You can't do the things you did with Pat that you did with Jameis Winston, mm-hmm. you know. And so I think that's what a lot of people in the NFL realize. Even in college, it's, it's oh, we got this coach. Look what he did at this university or look what he did with this organization. Let's get that here. It doesn't work like that. Mm-hmm. You, know, you have to build the pieces around what you have and you kind of have to mold that foundation in a different way of everybody else. And that's what makes the game of football so unique. Yeah. And, you know, honestly, you just said something that completely blew my mind and I probably knew it just, just if I dug it up, but you played with Patrick Mahomes, Joe Burrow, and Justin Herbert. Holy cow, man. What a, what a quarterback. You're like the goat maker. I mean, that's crazy. <laughs> you know, you like, don't be surprised one day. I just become an elite offensive coordinator. And I'm just gonna be calling up. I'm gonna be calling up all these guys, and I'm gonna be getting little gigs, little little uh, and, and traits, and we're gonna have a West Coast RPO deep threat slinging offense, and it's gonna be high tempoed, and, and it's gonna be fueled by Justin Herbert, Joe Burrow, and, and Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> Is your like first step of the offense gonna be like, all right? So first off, you have to hire. Uh, one of the best quarterbacks of a generation who's going to break records left and right. So that's my, that's the first step of my offense we're going to install is that quarterback. Yeah, pretty sure, the, pretty sure those guys are going to be, when they're done playing ball, they're going to be golfing and, and not worried about football for a very long time. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sure. Um, so LSU faces uh, a bit of a new challenge this offseason on, on their football team. Mm. Um, they're bringing in, they've already got 11 players added from the transfer portal to this team Mm -hmm. and a lot of these guys are going to have to come in and just like play immediately and you leave in texas tech you were a guy who had to come in and play and add some quality snaps pretty quickly at lsu um what are the challenges that those guys are going to face i mean it's interesting comparing the challenge of okay you've been in college but it's a different college and a different team but now you're going to a new college yeah. and you're learning a new team, but you're, you've got that experience having played at a major power five school. What, what, what challenges do those transfers face? That's a really great question, Preston. And, um, you know, I don't think a lot of people realize that when you transfer schools, especially with LSU is going through now, a lot of turnover, a lot of fans and a lot of, a lot of national media see, you know, the Brian Kelly hired and they expect, these players to come in and make a difference immediately, which is right. You want that out of your, your new impact players, your, your transfers, your incoming class, the newly enrollees. But like I talked about earlier in the, in the show, when we had the, the B enemy topic, the foundation is so much different for every player. LSU is such a, a storied program that it isn't one of those schools where you come in and you just, plug this piece in and you become that guy. That's a few guys. That's Jamal Adams. That's Leonard Fournette. That's a Joe Burrow. Those are very few guys you get once in a generation. The first thing I think that's very important for these transfers is not just knowing that, all right, I got to prove myself to these coaches. You have to prove your worth in that locker room. When I first got to LSU, I talked about it with Jock Ducey on his on our, on our little segment. And I told Jock, I said, when I first got to LSU, I had to prove myself. I, I, I couldn't walk around and just kind of live off my laurels with what I did at Texas Tech. You know, I was all Big 12, started every game. I had to start from the bottom and I had to show the guys, Greg Gilmore, Frank Heron, Christian Lockature, Arden Key. I had to show these guys that I could play football. I had to show them that I was a trustworthy guy in the locker room. And that's what you're going to get from these transfers. And my advice would be to just keep your head down and work because guys like me, Joe, Thaddeus Moss, when we first came into LSU, that's kind of all we did was just put our head down and work, stuck to the grind. And you got to earn your respect of your teammates before you can get onto that field for training camp in the fall. And then you take that first snap in the Saturday night in Death Valley and, and under the under the lights. Yeah, yeah. and uh, it, certainly a lot more of them are going to have to do that. 
yeah. than we've seen in quite a while. Although there's been quite a few key guys who, yeah. you know, notably, you know, Joe Burrow, yourself, uh, Liam Shanahan here recently yeah. who've had to do it. But yeah, quite, quite a bit. What was your reaction to LSU hiring Brian Kelly? I remember I talked with you about the reaction after LSU parted ways with Ogeron, which was obviously very upsetting for, for you, you know, your coach. Yeah. But uh, any thoughts on the Brian Kelly to LSU? You know, I know, I know a lot of people really wanted the, the flashy hire, you know, new blood, young, upcoming, maybe Coach Aranda, maybe a Joe Brady, something mm. along those lines. And understandably so. They were part of the championship program. They understood how the program, how the state runs. But to me, in the state of which the program was in, right, you needed total reshifting of the program. A lot of players declaring for the NFL, a lot of opt-outs, a lot of transfers, transfer portal, how that's kind of hurt college football. We can talk about that a little bit more in the show. But you needed somebody who's going to come in and, and bring order. And Brian Kelly, coming from Notre Dame, has had a track record of success, right? He's had – he's uh, I think three winning his coach in college football right now, if I'm not mistaken, don't quote me on most, that. Most active wins. That's correct. Most active yeah. wins. And um, he has very similar to Saban. I won't say he is Nick Saban, but he has a system in place of the staff he wants, how it looks, and how it's going to get done. And if it doesn't get done, he's going to find the guys to get it done. You, When you clean house like how they did at LSU, you want somebody of that nature who's going to bring an order. I understand you want new blood and and you want young upcoming guys that are, you know, the flashy picks, but you want somebody who's going to come in and build a foundation. You know, before you get the flashy windows and the and the nice lights and the bright city, you better make sure that foundation's set. Because if it's not set, that house, that tower's coming down. You know, and I think Brian Kelly's going to build from the bottom up. Yeah. Uh, and speaking of Breen building from the bottom up, you know, he is going to do an offense that – it, it almost kind of blows my mind that we're saying this about the SEC. <laughs> but he's going to run more of a pro style, incorporate the tight end offense, um, you know, a, a physical running game that will feature, should feature uh, a big offensive line. But th this is a question that maybe uh, five years ago someone would, would, would violently slap me for asking, but can a, a pro style ground and pound physical type offense – in the world of high pace, flashy offenses can be successful in the SEC. That's a that's a tough one, right? Um, wow. You know what I will say to that? I will say the game's always changing, right? And what worked for us, and I keep rephrasing this, but what I tell fans a lot, what worked for us in the 2019 season for LSU football may not work not may, won't work for the 2020-21 yeah. and 2022 season for LSU football. The game's right. changing. New talent are uh, – I mean, the players are evolving. You know, when I came out of high school, being six foot three, 285 pounds was like the it factor. Now I see guys that are 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, you know, guys like Mason Smith coming out of LSU mm -hmm. and uh, coming out of high school to LSU and, and just freaks of nature, you know. Jack and Roy, all these young guys, Jacoby and Guillory, who squats the world. Yeah. Like, like that was – it's a new age. And I think any scheme can work. Like I said, you just have to find the right guys and the right coach to just put it together. And who knows, you know, the ceiling from there. Yeah. And, and, and you know, just nonchalantly, now you have to line up next to uh, Aaron Donald, who, you know, he's just <laughs> – he's a scrub. What's it like just, you know, literally like playing right next to like – the best defensive lineman in football. Well, if I could, because I'm with the Chargers, he's with the Rams. Two oh, different man, LA. I'm totally messing up, two my bad, LA. dude. Oh, but I will dude. Say that. Oh man, what a, what a goof I, up there. I will say I, I do play next to the best pass rusher in football, in Joey Bosa. Um, but a guy with a guy like Aaron Donald, um, I mean. I'd kind of be afraid to play next to him because the guy's just so great of a player, right? Like with a guy like that, it's it's you got to plug in and fit. 
right? Whoever's next to him. Because if the pieces around him don't work, I mean, Aaron's a, a guy that everything kind of flows around him because he's that yeah. great of a player. You have to find guys that'll mesh and fit the puzzle. Mm-hmm. Very similar to Joey. Joey's a probably one of the freakish athletes I've ever been around. Over yeah, and I was going to transition that into that. What what's it? How does it change your role having a guy like a Joey Bosa on your line with you? You know. So you got it. Like when I'm out there with Joey, it's it's communication, it's eye contact, it's body language, it's knowing how the flow of the game is going. Like there is no time before the play to be like, hey, Joey, like, what do you want to do here, man? Do you want to come inside? Like, I'll wrap around. Like, it's Joey goes down, gets in his stance. He knows it. I know it. And like the play just unfolds. And it's crazy how even as such a great of a player he is, he tends to be a mesh fitter too. And, and an example as if I mess up during the play, he makes me right. You know, it's not always, you know, usually you hear great players, they take their shot. There's always guys to make them right. But Joey's such a great player where he makes you right in whatever you do. I've got a question from American Patriot. He wants to know how your dad is. Uh, how, how's Billy the Haka Warrior doing? He's doing, he's doing great. Appreciate it, American Patriot. He's, uh, he's doing strong as always, entertaining as always. If, if you haven't heard from him, just go look at his Instagram. Um, he's entertaining every day. I mean, full of life. Mom's doing well too. Full of life. Appreciate you for asking. Well, guys, this has been Braden Fajoko, who has been exceptional here tonight. Braden, of course, uh, is working on. You know, he's going to want to build a personal brand. He's had his eyes on pursuing a media career after football for quite a while. Yeah, I'm sure he would appreciate your support. If you don't already follow him, go give him a follow. It'll help him, you know, have a good, successful career. Uh, Braden, can you tell people where they can follow you, your Twitter handles, Instagram, all that good stuff? Yes. Uh, go ahead and give me a follow on Twitter. I'm selfishly saying this, but I think I am the best follow on Twitter, if you haven't yet, at Braden Fogo 4 You can also follow me on Instagram, at Louisianimal underscore 91, or you can follow me on TikTok as well, at Braden Fogo. Oh, you got the TikTok now. That's progressive, man. Yes, you're you're, you're on all the, the fancy stuff. New to the game. Uh, Moving <laughs> off on Facebook. <laughs> oh, well, I appreciate you, Braden, man. Uh, have a great oh, night, bro. bud. Appreciate it, brother. Thank you for having me. That was Los Angeles Chargers defensive tackle, Braden Fajoko, who was just exceptionally knowledgeable, uh, very good, well-spoken guy. Glad to have him on the show. Y'all don't go anywhere. Because we're going to be talking LSU's recruiting class with National Signing Day uh, a week from tomorrow. Um, Mike had a great show earlier tonight, breaking a lot of that down. I'm going to tell you my few names I'm, I'm watching uh, and what, you know how I feel, where we're hearing on those guys. So uh, if you have any comments, anything you want to discuss or talk about, make sure to drop that uh, in the comments section. I'll take care of you there. Um, if you don't mind while we're here, hit that like, share to your your personal social medias. Let's get, uh, you know, help me beat Mike Scarborough in views and all that good analytic stuff that makes things go on around here. I'm sure plenty of people want to, will want to hear from Braden. Of course, the replay of the show is available after this. Um, but uh, before we move on, I did want to thank my sponsor, tonight we want to thank dead soxy dead soxy as you can see the socks behind me produces all sorts of quality lsu socks i've got the link to the show in the description of this video if you're watching on the tiger bait site there's a clickable link there in the youtube and facebook there's a link in the description you might have to copy and paste to use that but anyways use that code go check out the, them out deadsoxy.com use promo code tiger bait and you're going to get 25 percent off your order of these good high quality socks and i show people every day on the show you get them in and come in these you know nice high quality packaging and it's real nice the even the tag here i'm feeling it's like um it's nice it's a rich texture but in this weather by the way these socks have been just gold for me they're 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 nice warm cushioned very soft i mean incredibly silky soft guys but well, it's really nice for me in this weather. So my socks tend to, I have bigger calves. They slide down my calves a lot. Well, they've got these things that I'm sure have a scientific name, but I'm going to roll with the glue dots because that's what I like. And of course, you see the little seam there lined in. On the other side, it's invisible, but you see it there. 
Very high quality sock. I recommend it. Every sponsor we take on this show, whether it's Pride Roofing or Tremonti's Meat and Seafood, one thing we try to be um, sensitive to is we want to have a quality product that we can endorse and we would use ourselves and we trust. So that, that is 100% where Dead Soxy stands. So appreciate you, Dead Soxy. So eight spots remaining in this recruiting class. And the, they have been on absolute fire in the transfer portal, bringing in lots of guys that we, we've discussed. Um, there's two five-star guys LSU still in the mix for, which to me with the coaching transition and everything that's gone down with this program is highly impressive. Jacoby Matthews, five-star safety at a Ponchatoula. I can confirm tonight um, one of my good buddies, Blake Rafino, uh, was able to check him with some sources and confirm um, Jacoby Matthews is being visited by Texas A&M coach Jimbo Fisher in Louisiana right now. So um, you've got – you've got – you're going to have to fight for Jacoby Matthews, but he'll be on campus Friday. Um I feel good where LSU stands with uh, Jacoby Matthews. Next up, Westgate tight end Danny Lewis confirmed to TigerBait.com. He will be on LSU's campus tomorrow. Um, of course, Brian Kelly will be back on campus for that. He was uh, visiting actually tonight. Texas wide receiver Caleb Douglas. Uh, and Brian Kelly made that in person, brought Coach Hank with him. So kind of the that they must really like what they see on film from Caleb Douglas. So keep in mind, but so Brian Kelly will be back. And from what I'm hearing, Brian Kelly, when he is talking to recruits, um, he is very impressive. He's more of the closer. Now he's not on the phone every single morning with every recruit like Ed Ogeron was. Uh, he's not as aggressive. He's more of the closer. And when he comes, he's going to have like, like a plan in place for you, like, like almost like a financial investor. Like this is what we're going to do with your 401k portfolio. And this is how we plan to use it. And here's how your future is going to be. Imp he, he, very impressive from all reports. Um, the big X factor in LSU's recruiting class right now, and the biggest name, and I think possibly the best player in the country, in my opinion, um, Harold Perkins linebacker out of Texas, five-star all world, all everything. Harold, will be on campus Friday. Now, he just decommitted from Texas A&M, so you feel pretty good. Uh, his uncle's like a huge LSU fan from New Orleans, very vocal about it, and that never hurts to have uh, an uncle who is um, very into it. So uh, it's a weird recruiting cycle. I'll tell you, my the Texas A&M guys I'm, I've talked to, they're, they're, they think this is just craziness. What's going on with his recruiting cycle? They've, they've uh, even I've heard uh, Zach Evans 2.0 thrown out. Um, so it, it's a bit of a wild. I've even heard Jackson State, you know, with Coach Prime might be a factor in his recruiting, and you never know. So it's one of those deals where I really don't know what to expect, but. Um, I'm not sure. I, I'm not. I'm not taking LSU over the field. Understand? I expect him to go somewhere else. Not not expect, but like if I had to bet, I'd say he'd go somewhere else. But I will say LSU probably has the best chance of anybody. But I'm still taking the field over LSU. Just he he could end up in a variety of places. So we talked to. Um, we talked uh, Caleb already, but uh, the next big name watching out for is Trevante Sitson, and he had a visit to LSU. By all accounts, it was an, it was an outstanding visit. Absolutely outstanding visit. So keeping it, you know, that I was feeling kind of 50-50, if not maybe a slight lean toward Auburn before that. I feel better. And LSU wants Trevante Sitson, and I'm not sure they'll be done at right Running back, just adding no Kane and Gravante Citizen. Um, they, they may pursue more names, transfer portal and whatnot. Um, of course, John Emery will be back next year. So looking for a pretty good running back room. Um, 
there's a there's a corner from Oklahoma State. LSU has also been in talks with Jarek Bernard Converse. Keep an eye out for him. Keep an eye out for him. Um, I, there might be some academic issues in play with him uh, over there at Oklahoma State. So if he were to come to LSU, he's got to be enrolled Thursday. So we'll see with him. Uh, guys, if y'all have any questions about any specific recruit or any coaching hires, any NFL stuff, y'all drop a comment and let me know. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss it. Um, before I get going here, I just got to give one more plug to Tremonti's Meat and Seafood. Y'all make sure to go check out their Heaven's Door Single Barrel uh, Staff Select Whiskey. Um, they are, um, uh, it's, it's you know, they bring it in uh, to the store and all the employees and, and Mike Tremonti, owner of the store, they sample from a variety of barrels that there's only one of this whiskey made. And they, 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 they sample it and they pick which one would be best for their customers. And this is the one they've picked out. It is very good. It is available for $59.99. If you have a whiskey lover in your life, this is what they're going to enjoy. So y'all go check them out. Corner of Old Jefferson and Airline Highway. We're going to hear from them and we'll be right back. Tremonti's has meat. Tremonti's has seafood. Tremonti's has much more. Tailgating and home gating platters. Huge wine and liquor selection. Beer and all the spices you need. Chairman Reserve and Wagyu meats. Ribeye rolls, shrimp rolls, kebabs. 20 flavors of sausage for the grill. Daily lunch specials and game processing. On-site catering also available. Good meat ain't cheap and cheap meat ain't good. Visit Tremonti's.com. All right, got to get to a few comments here before we move on. Uh, Ryan says, pop that up there real quick, but take it down, because this is a family-friendly show, but darn it, Preston. Yeah, I goofed up there. I can't believe I said Aaron Donald, man. I can't believe I said that. Um, but Braden was cool about it, and y'all, I promise you, I do that. I do that. I just, sometimes when we're offhand, I just goof up little things, and <laughs> la la in my head the uh, blah so what i gotta say about that uh thanks for the comment uh hope y'all enjoyed uh that screw up at my expense um let's see here uh <laughs> i knew this would come tonight um i didn't even bother adding him to my list to like check down to make sure i mentioned because i knew somebody was going to do it for me Caleb Williams. Caleb is a kid I like a lot, and I've talked to him quite a few times. He's very polite, very respectful. Um, and he, of course, likes LSU. He went here for a camp um, during his recruiting process. Must have been two years ago now. And honestly, LSU coaches had him and Nuss Meyer tied as number one quarterback on their board. Uh, and they wanted to take the one who was willing to make the commitment first. He, of course, followed Lincoln Riley to Oklahoma. Now, Everybody says USC, 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 USC. And I, I say USC too, by the way. Um, but with every day that goes by, it kind of becomes more likely that he may end up elsewhere. And uh, of course, there's been like Oklahoma TV news directors came out and said it's down to LSU and Caleb Williams. Make no mistake, Caleb Williams is the transfer out of the transfer portal you want. Like he, he he's the number one name. He's the eligibility, the talent, just the position he plays. Uh, I, I probably wouldn't pick anybody else over Caleb Williams. He is a very talented player who is just an absolute game changer. Um, however, I just do don't see a way he ends up going anywhere else other than USC. He's playing it very, very close to the sleeve right now. He he's not revealing anything. Um, a lot of people are like, well, if it's a done deal USC, why hadn't he announced it? All his teammates have. I, and this is pure speculation, y'all, and I'm just going to put this out here is that, you know, I wonder, could there be some NIL stuff in play? You know, making people think maybe he isn't a, a shoe in. I, I, I don't know. Uh, um, that's That's one thing that just, comes to my mind of speculation. Please don't like say Preston said he's doing this so he can negotiate whatever. I'm just, that's something I grow curious about. But anyways, uh, Caleb Williams, uh, 
I just don't see it happening coming to LSU. And look, if, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Great. We'll handle that when he makes it. But there's been very minimal contact with the LSU coaching staff. Uh, there's been some, but not uh, by as far as I'm aware, he hasn't been to LSU or anything like that. And been down to Baton Rouge uh, this off season. So uh, I'd be, I'd be pretty surprised to if it ended up being uh, Caleb Williams to LSU, but I was surprised when Arik Gilbert announced he was coming to LSU. So things happen. Recruiting is a weird, weird world. I mean, the number one recruit in the country signed with Jackson State this year. <laughs> you know, things happen. Let's see here. Chuck Garrard, Preston Tiger Bait needs to get a sponsor that produces the hover helmet. Chuck, I agree 100%. I'm going to take this screenshot. In fact, wait, 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 wait. I'm getting my phone out. I'm getting my phone out. Getting the phone out. And I'm going to take a picture of this right now. You see my, wait. See, there's the phone, guys. I'm literally going to DM this to them because I want Hover Helmet to sponsor this show because that Hover Helmet gets so much attention on the show. I want to add them. And I love my Hover Helmet, by the way. It's really cool. Um, let's see here. Daniel Glenn asked a comment. I'm just going to say no comment on that one, Daniel Glenn. We're not, we're not, <laughs> we're not touching that, uh, that story, the Sharon Lewis stuff. Um, mm. So I'll go to a little bit of a, a recap of the signing class, what I'm expecting. I feel LSU is in really good position for Jacoby Matthews, Harold Perkins. I'm like, I don't know, one third chance I'd get something in that ballpark I don't really you know he, 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 it's a wild situation Danny Lewis Westgate tight end of course Alabama made a push he visited Alabama I think I think LSU takes care of business with with, with Danny Lewis I feel good about that one um Caleb Douglas they're pushing very hard for Caleb Douglas uh and you know, he's not a huge name receiver. They must see something they really like out of him. And LSU's got a lot of receivers, like a lot of receivers. Um, so uh, they, they must see something they really like. And Brian Kelly and Coach Hank went to go see him tonight in home. I think that's someone LSU's going to bring in. And then Travante Citizen, I have a – it's not impossible – but I have a good feeling that LSU will finish business with, with Trevante Citizen. He, of course, was a, a former commit. Um, we'll see about uh, Bernard Convert Converse, the corner out of Oklahoma State. Um, we'll see. Um, but those are some names to watch. You're probably going to look at about three or four spots after signing day going into spring ball, and they're probably going to keep it until after spring ball when position battles shake out and they can bring in those bodies. Like, you know, think about Joe Burrow spring, you know, spring chart. Um, you know, he got beat out and he was a quality player who just didn't give the spot, especially if you're going to look to add a quarterback. That's where I look at. It. Like, especially if you want a quarterback, that's somewhere where you might be able to snag a really good one. Cause there's only one quarterback, who could start? And there's a variety of scenarios why you might pick one or the other. Anyways, um, so three or four spots, go on to spring, then bring in some quality guys afterward, and you're you're gonna get your your full twenty five plus seven, so thirty two guys in this class. <sighs> guys, I also want to touch on uh, how excited I am about Bengals game this weekend. Joe Burrow versus Clyde Edwards Elair and Tyron Matthew. And of course, Jamar Chase. What a matchup of just LSU studs out there. And then on the other side, you got Big Whitworth and you've got Odell Beckham Jr. What a wild weekend in the NFL. What a wild weekend. Um, I've never seen anything like four games decided on the last play. Uh, Tom Brady makes an epic comeback and then doesn't. 13 seconds for Mahomes. So, uh, yeah, that AFC championship is going to be a lot of fun to watch. Um, I do I do think this is where the Bengals' magical run 
comes to a stop. I think it's really difficult to beat a good football team twice. Really difficult. And uh, that Bengals offensive line, they got to do something about it. I mean, my goodness, at least this offseason, you know exactly what to focus on because you don't have any, like, gaping holes on your team. Yeah, that That's, like, the, the gaping hole. I mean, every, they have a lot of solid players across the board. Um, may, maybe even Eli Apple. We'll, we'll, we'll say even Eli Apple's not a gaping hole. He did make a play there down late, but then had some, some, some Louisiana commentary on Twitter we didn't like. Teresa Michelle, Misha, Misha, uh, from, from things I see on Twitter. I believe Perkins and Jacoby land at the same college, but that's my opinion. And Teresa, I tend to agree. Um, and of course, Texas A&M was pushing on both those. And probably a couple of weeks ago, Texas A&M was the favorite to land both. Um, and, you know, players say package deal stuff all the time. And I've heard it with them, too. I'm sure they want to. Um, but if they're going to be a package deal, huge advantage LSU. I mean, huge. If they were going to be a package deal to Texas A&M, it wouldn't make a ton of sense to me that Harold Perkins would decommit like when he did this late down the road. Like, why would you commit and then decommit just to recommit? It doesn't, it just is, doesn't sit right with me unless there was a, there had to be some sort of change of heart. And then I, I think that that kind of stuff bodes pretty well for LSU, but We'll see. I, the Harold Perkins stuff, it's tough to get inside his head. I, I'm not even sure he knows where he wants to go play college right now. So we'll see. If it's a package deal, huge advantage LSU. Huge advantage because I feel really good about Jacoby Matthews. Is Matthew okay to play? Daniel Glenn, I have not heard for sure one way or the other. I'm leaning toward no. He did put out, tweeted out some uh, – prayer cards but he's still on the roster and he still moves on he's still going to get a ring uh you get what i'm saying like he's he's still there on the team uh and, and it's not like he, he would be a reserve player and you know he even if he doesn't play this weekend he'd be there for the super bowl so that's all i was saying by mentioning matthew you know um it, it's probably a day-by-day -day thing that's usually how um most uh concussion protocols are are handled here nowadays um guys we're gonna um get ready here wrap up the show in in, in like you know five ten minutes something like that i want you to let you know i want to i try to end these shows with like rapid fire get in your question i'll handle it you know we, we'll, we'll discuss it um i try to close out getting everybody again but before i do that i do want to thank our sponsor who's made this show possible all season long tremonti's meat and seafood 30 kinds of meat and sausage available at their restaurant there at the corner of old Jefferson and airline just behind Parkview Baptist. Y'all go give them a try. It's really good stuff. They're going to have crawfish coming soon. I'm, I can't wait. Yeah. I cannot wait for the day. I can come on this show and crack open a live live shot of a Tremonti's crawfish. Oh, man, it's the best. It really is the best. But anyways, let's hear from Tremonti's, and we'll get back to the rapid-fire questions. Tremonti's has meat. Tremonti's has seafood. Tremonti's has much more. Tailgating and home-gating platters. Huge wine and liquor selection. Beer and all the spices you need. Chairman Reserve and Wagyu meats. Ribeye rolls, shrimp rolls, kebabs. 20 flavors of sausage for the grill. Daily lunch specials and game processing. On-site catering also available. Good meat ain't cheap and cheap meat ain't good. Visit Tremontes.com. Tremontes Meat and Seafood for making your LSU football fix possible every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Daniel Glenn with a good question. Glad he, glad, glad he brought this up because we I touched on it, but I didn't really get to give my full take on this. Um... I'm, I'm heartbroken, man. Um, as a saints fan, um, I, I, Sean Payton meant so much to the, that city and this state and brought winning to a program that didn't know winning. I remember growing up a bit of a Colts fan because I liked Peyton Manning because in every year for the playoffs, there was just no saints to, 
to root for. You couldn't root. They, they, they just never made it. And I even remember Nick Saban coming to Tiger Stadium and rooting for Nick Saban to beat the Saints because the Saints were just so bad that year it didn't even matter. Uh, and it's, you know, it's just, it, it was really tough to root for a program that gave you just no hope. And he came in, brought in Drew Brees and brought hope. And now all of a sudden, you know, the two faces that have become synonymous with the Saints and New Orleans, Drew Brees and Sean Payton are out in back-to-back seasons. So heartbroken. I'm so thankful. I mean, he, what Sean Payton and Drew Brees did for New Orleans is more than I think any professional athlete has done for any city, given the context of what they came into. It wasn't a broken football team. It was a broken city and a broken quarterback and a first time head coach came in and gave a broken people hope and something to look forward to something to be excited for. And I mean, look, man, as a Saints fan, I cannot express my gratitude enough for what Sean Payton accomplished for a hopeless franchise. And the fact that the Saints will win the Super Bowl when hell freezes over and pigs fly, well, pigs flew and hell froze. The Saints won the Super Bowl, man. Um, That just means so much. And you can point toward the flaws and all that stuff, but it's one of those takes of how can you hate on someone? How are you hating on us in the club? You can't even get in. It's one of those things. The Saints were in the conversation every year. The worst was seven and nine. So very thankful for him. Um, I know, I think most people are pushing for Dennis Allen to be the next coach, which I mean, look, he's a good coach. Um, and I don't, you know, a lot of people want to point out first thing, oh, well, he was eight and 25 as a coach for the Raiders or whatever, you know. Um, well, you know, the thing is, is that he, so I, an NFL coach who's not successful in the NFL, it's different than like a coach who's not successful in college. Very few retread coaches go on to be long term successful, consistent winners in college because there's an unfair advantage in college based on what college you coach for. That program has something built around it that makes it a program that can consistently win. It is unfair to compare LSU with like a ULL or LSU to a Troy or LSU to whatever. That's why when LSU loses to Troy, it's like, it's catastrophic because like you should never lose to that team. You have an unfair advantage. So coaches who get these big, good jobs and there's a certain bar at there that this is what we've seen this, this program do for a while. And you can't either elevate or the bar goes down under your, there's probably some problems with the coach In the NFL. You can get terrible scenarios and you know, it's not like LSU where you might get, you know, there's a ton of talent in the state and get some guys in, you have an unfair advantage and you build it up. Like there's rough situations that are rough to overcome. So I'm not going to write off Dennis Allen, but I want Eric B enemy. That's, that's who I want. And we're going to spend maybe four minutes talking about the Saints coaching search. Um, we spent 70 days talking about the LSU coaching search. That's just off the top of my head. I don't know if it was actually 70 days or not, but <laughs> it felt like forever. We talked about LSU. This will be much more brief. I want Eric being to me. I've seen the offense. Uh, that's why I talked to Braden about can that um, can that offense be successful based on what he's seen? Because there's so many freaks of nature there, and it's not like he gets to bring Mahomes with him. Um, but I've seen enough out of him to give him a shot. He's got an innovative offense. He's a bright mind. Um, I mean, if he wins this weekend, that's his third consecutive Super Bowl. Um, give him a chance. I like him. I like him a lot. Um, let's see here. <laughs> Look, here's James Hidalgo, Dennis Allen, new head coach. Um, you heard my take there. Uh, I wouldn't mind it at all. Uh, I'm not sure he wouldn't be my second choice, um, although there's some really good NFL uh, assistants out there right now. Let's see here. Chuck Gerard commenting, it could be that Perkins oh, – 
took him on, took him off. It could be that Perkins is doing this to get a deal for Matthews. Maybe. Maybe. Um, we'll see. I, I'm hearing the NIL deals at Texas A&M are pretty good. By the way, this recruiting class Texas A&M has built, y'all. Uh, crack a, tex- uh, a Texas 8-4 and four joke all you want. With this recruiting class, they're going to win something. I don't know where the ceiling is, but that, look, I, I would bet the bank on that sometime in the next three years, this Texas A&M will have a season better than eight and four. <laughs> I, I'd bet a very large amount of uh, money about that. Mark Cumby, of course, some coaches are better coordinators. And of course, that's both of those coaches we're talking about. And that's 100% true. 100%. There's a lot that goes into being a head coach that doesn't correlate to being a coordinator and vice versa. So we'll see. I'm rooting for Eric being a me. Um, I think there's a lot of guys who can be uh, good for this team. I want to thank each and every one of you for watching your LSU football fix tonight. Y'all don't forget to hit that like, hit that subscribe button. We're a growing channel. We're about to hit 11,000 subscribers. I appreciate y'all so much for supporting the show uh, all season long. Um, Y'all make sure to hit that like, subscribe, share to your friends on Facebook, and then afterward, make sure to go hop over to TigerBait.com. It's going to be a good week with LSU National Signing Day coming along. Um, Worth your $1 to give it a try in the premium community, but there's plenty of free content as well. You can sign up for text alerts to get all the updates as we go. Uh, Email newsletters, a free subscription as well. So y'all make sure to hop on over to TigerBait.com. Appreciate y'all for joining your LSU football fix. Y'all have a great night, guys.